So, so you, you, you maybe find, you get on the machine, you make some swings, and you kind of see, are there players who you're very similar to? Already. It, so already. I can't right. see the target, so I'm going to need your course knowledge here to help me. Uh, well, let's find it. I can't see it either. I can tell you I where. I think I'm right in line with one of those chimneys. Yeah, you are. It's actually going to be to the right of the chimneys. Okay, you see these two, the, the big trees over here on the right? The little valley and those, yeah, yeah, yeah. the valley and those big trees? Uh -huh. That's a great aiming point. So that's what you're going to be able to see is the valley and those trees. 137 from here. Okay, so I should have 167. Now what you did is pretty smart, and I don't think most people understand it. When you have a target you can't see, you walk up and you take your rangefinder. When you can see it, you zoom in on it. Yeah. That tells you where your yardage is there. Then you walk back to here, and you add it to it, and you do a little math. So your target, remember we picked the little V in those trees? I see it now. Okay. Yeah. What shot are you going to hit? You're going to hit a normal trajectory. You're going to hook it. You're going to fade I'm gonna it. I'm going to fade it. Okay. I feel the wind like this. I just okay. want to kind of ride with that, and, and my body feels kind of like jazzed up, so I feel more like body rotation. So I think a fade is going to. Okay. Be all right. For me right so now. now make see the shot, and then make a swing that fits the feel. As soon as you got it, and you say there it is. If I do that, it's going to do what I want it to do. Now you're right. Now you're done. So now you're just going to aim it and duplicate, duplicate that feel. And we're ranking more on whether or not you duplicate the field and where the ball goes. Same thing, my body just shot. So I would instantly. So you didn't let it go around. There you go. So what you did there, me watching you, yeah. you made your practice swing and it was set up really good and you went ahead and let it swing all the way around. And then you got up to the shot and you got right here and you stopped and you kind of hung on to it so it faded it more than you wanted to. Yeah, I overdid the... You right. held off the face. Yeah. So anytime, noticing you, anytime you try to hit a fade, mm -hmm. see I'm right over here. Anytime you try to hit a fade, your concept of hitting a fade is holding off the face so it doesn't turn down. Yeah, it's like that, that lead shoulder opens a lot and yeah. then I hold it off a lot. Okay, well so. here's... Here's the other thing I think you, you, people, you have to learn that I learned, and, and Joe told me a lot about this, because I would hit a fade the same way. I would stand up, and I'd hold on tighter with the last three fingers, and I'd drag the handle, and I'd hit it. So it would hold the face open. That was your, your fade. Field. And I'd hit a fade, and I'd do that, and he'd go, what was that? I go, well, that was a fade. He goes, well, no, that's a, that's a drag the handle, hold on fade. He says, you have to make, you have to do a released fade so that there's club head speed, but the ball doesn't hook. And I said, well, okay, so how do I do that? So here was his deal. Okay, so what do we got? I got uh, 148. Okay, so here's, if you take the club, if I come into the ball and I hit the ball, and after I hit the ball, if I work my right hand this way, which is what I used to do as a player, there's no way I'm going to hit a pull or a hook. So. I'm still releasing the momentum of the club, but rather than drag the handle, all I'm doing is I'm releasing the club in a manner, or I'm using my hands where the face doesn't turn down so it doesn't hit a hook. Yeah. Okay, so now I can stand here and hit an aggressive shot, but all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the club a little bit differently through the ball, so what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna hit a fade, but I'm gonna do it with a release. Even I hung on to that a little bit. So when Joe, when we start talking about hitting fades, so you've got Dustin Johnson, you've got a lot of these guys who hit fades, but they don't hit fades. They tell, they say, well, they're holding on. No, they're not. You don't hit it that far by dragging the handle and hitting a fade this way. He's letting the weight of the club go, but the way he's doing it, the club face doesn't turn down. So he sets up. And even though the face is shut, when he comes into the ball, the way he lets the club go, the face doesn't turn down. So what happens is, with a shut face, so there it goes. So I had, there's Dustin Johnson kind of, there's a little bit of a shut face, 
I released the club, so I let the club head go so there's speed. I just didn't turn the face down. All right, I'm gonna try that. In slow motion, I know when I see my swing, no matter how much I'm trying to feel this spanking move, it crosses over yeah. quite a bit. Well, that's because for so long, you were, you twisted out here and the club got so far behind you, you had to twist to catch it up. Yeah, it was a game of fighting each other. When the club gets behind you, you can square it two ways. You can twist your body to pull it into the ball, or you can use your forearms to try to twist it back. I tried both of those. So all I want you to do is concentrate on through the ball. Yeah. You're going to be nice and so you're going to run the club into the ball and through the ball you're going to feel after you hit it, you're going to feel like your right hand works under this way. Okay. Feel that? That's all you're going to do. Now it has nothing to What's do with... Un oh, under rather than on twist. top of it. Yeah, yeah. Under the grip. There. So you're not going to feel like you have any forearm rotation at all. It's just going to feel like there. That's what it's going to feel like. Okay. So just go ahead and hit one like that just for the heck of it. So you can let the club release, go, hit it, and what did you, what did you hit? That was a nice little, nice little high fade. It was like a, one of that super solid. So in my terms, that would be what Joe called a release. Like I can still see the roots, I like that. They call that a released fade. Uh -huh. Now I would call that, the, the, I don't like the term release, so I try not to use it. Uh -huh. I would say there you use your hands correctly where you could accelerate the club and the face didn't turn down, so you hit a fade with accelerating club head, not by holding off the face. So from like a track man point of view, you know, when we're talking, or D plane point of view, yeah. when we're talking about uh, that type of fade versus the type of fade I tried to hit over there, yeah. like the come over hold on fade. Right. How is this one a little different? Is it actually coming more straight down the line and it's just the face is slightly open? You know, what, what you're gonna see on track man is if you actually make the ball do what you wanted it to do, what you would see on track man is very similar numbers but less speed through the ball. Oh, okay. This one's gonna have more speed than the one you did because uh -huh. you were dragging and holding the face off. Now the path and the face, if you get the ball to start on the right line mm -hmm. and cut the way you wanted it to, you're gonna have similar numbers on track. And that's why I say I can get on track, man, and, and I can show you numbers multiple different ways. And you watch the swings. Like, All right, Mike, appreciate that. Sure. What Brandon's a marathon great. day I think we have about. <laughs> Six hours of footage or something? We do. Yeah. Uh, so let's just recap some of the, the, the learning points from me. Um, one thing I learned is in practice, I hadn't in the last 11 months since I saw you almost ever done that thing where I hit balls for, for a minute, and uh, hit a ball, and then a minute later did it, mostly because I thought that that was more of a testing procedure for, for to see if the swing that you think is good really is good. And it is that. But what I learned today is that that's actually something that will bring you closer to a better swing. Yeah, it'll it'll make you understand your game relative to playing golf. Yeah, I mean that's what the, the, most people have no idea how to practice relative to how they play. Yeah. But it's not just testing; it actually will make you better. It, than that. For sure, it takes yeah. a lot more self-discipline, yeah. and and you're not yeah. just hitting balls, but you're learning more from it relative to who you are and how you play golf. And it's cheaper. It's cheaper. <laughs> so, uh, depending on where you play. Um, it's not cheaper if you already pay for your membership and it comes with free balls. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, the other thing that, that I got out of today I really liked was this. Um, you had said before in my last trip, offsetting forces. Yeah. But I thought that that was at a specific moment. It's almost during the entire swing you're offsetting it. That's, that's perfect. Yeah. That, that's, yeah. It is a continual offsetting of forces. I thought the Malaska move offsetting force was a downswing move that then you had to do something like that. No. But it's actually the entire time you're balancing that's right. things out. You know? That's right. And uh, also some great stuff that we had here. I learned how to... Uh, at least had to see what that 250 yard Lee Trevino <laughs> shot looks like in person. That was pretty cool. So you guys can see more, including an exclusive thing on the Smash Factor with Mike at BeBetterGolf.net. Check him out on MolaskaGolf.com where some of the content that we did today you'll be exclusively able to see over there. And also uh, some of that stuff will be on BeBetterGolf.net. Check out Mike on his YouTube channel, Molaska Golf, and the final plug is Instagram at Malaska Golf, at BB underscore Golf Show. I'm getting pretty good at this hosting thing. No stumbles, all right, good there job. we go. <laughs> see you later. Thanks for watching everybody. If you'd like to see more with Mike on Be Better Golf, check out the playlist that is connected right here on top of this screen. Uh, it's the Be Better Golf Malaska playlist. Also coming up on the channel, I have more interviews from this trip that I did at Tahatha Golf. 
And I think I'm going to be doing something in Vegas in December. So lots of cool stuff coming up. Click like and subscribe. Turn on post notifications because I'm going to be doing a lot of live videos. And talk to you later. Bye.